All right, in this lesson, 3.3, .3, Proofs with Parallel Lines, uh, what we're going to look at are pretty much everything we saw in 3.2 uh, when we talked about, you know, uh, corresponding angles and alternate interior angles and all those different angles. Except this time we throw a twist and we talk about the converse of each and every one. Uh, remember, when we take the converse, it is our, we take the original statement, which was hypothesis and conclusion, and then we change the order where the conclusion is now the hypothesis, hypothesis is now conclusion. If you recall, everything in 3.2 2 was pretty much if there are two parallel lines cut by a transversal then such and such angle is congruent. So with the converse it's a little bit different. Let's take a look at this theorem 3.5. It says corresponding angles converse and it says if two lines are cut by a transversal so the corresponding angles are congruent then the lines are parallel. So you can see all right, the other day, or in 3.2, we would say if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then angles, for example, 2 and 6 would be parallel. However, this time, we start off, once again, if you listen carefully, I have two angles, two corresponding angles that are congruent. That tells me that those two lines uh, that are cut by the transversal are parallel. So once again, we switch the order of the hypothesis and conclusion to come up with the converse. So pretty much the difference here is this. We know that two angles are congruent. Then that tells me that these two lines cut by the transversal are parallel. While before, I already start off with parallel lines, and then I can make different angle pair relationships. So in 3.6, if two lines are cut by a transversal so that the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So make sure you guys have all these in your notes. The alternate exterior angles converse, two lines cut by a transversal, so the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So once again, you can see that angles 1 and 8 are congruent. Those are alternate exterior angles. That tells me that lines J and is parallel to K. In theorem 3.8, we have the consecutive interior angles converse. Now remember, when it comes to interior angles, it doesn't tell me that um, angles are congruent. Well, this is saying that those consecutive interior angles, 3 and 5, they are supplementary. So if they equal 180, then line J is parallel to line K. And then lastly, right here, we take a look at the transitive property of parallel lines. Remember, transitive property, we're dealing with three things. So in this one, they're saying, look, if line P is parallel to line Q, and line Q is parallel to line R, then line P is parallel to R. Okay, there's that connection that we make with three different lines right here. So if one is parallel to the other, and the other two are parallel to each other, well, this is saying that all three lines happen to be parallel. P is parallel to Q, Q is parallel to R, R is parallel to Q. Okay, all three lines are parallel to one another. All right, so pretty short lesson right here. Let's go on, take a look at some of these problems. So, remember, they also ex ask you to explain your reasoning in these problems. And that is the big thing that students forget. And you're going to miss points or you're not going to get the answer fully correct. So, in number one, I take a look right here and it says find the value of x that makes m parallel to n. So remember, if m is parallel to n, then that means that these two angles right here should be congruent to each other. So that will allow me to find x if I go ahead and take 95 and I set that equal to 8x plus 55. We'll go ahead and solve for x. We'll subtract 55 to both sides. 
And then that leads us to right here. ourselves 40 is equal to 8x. Divide both sides by 8 and x is equal to 5. So if these two angles are parallel, or to make them parallel, I have to find x, which happens to be 5. 40 times uh, 55 gets me 95, and we have two congruent angles. I have to explain my reasoning. Okay, These two angles right there are corresponding angles. So let's go ahead and include that into our answer, and we'll put that they are corresponding angles. And then don't forget, the last thing is converse. Without the converse, this answer would be incorrect. Because remember, I do not know that these lines are parallel to begin with. All I know is that those two angles should be congruent, therefore making M and N parallel. Let's take a look at number two. These two angles right here, 130 and this 200 minus 2x, those two angles should be congruent. Reason being, hopefully you realize they're on the outside, they're on alternating sides, so we have alternate exterior angle. And then let's go ahead, alternate exterior angles, converse. So that will allow me to take 2x, or 200, minus 2x is equal to 130. And then go ahead and solve things out. We'll subtract 200 to both sides. And then you end up with negative 70. Divide both sides by negative 2. And x is equal to 35. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at number three. So we want to decide if there is enough information to prove that M is parallel to N. So let's see. I'm looking right here. I look at, I have my transversal. And I have two congruent angles right here that are going along with these two lines. The relationship between those two angles, they happen to be corresponding. So what I can go ahead and say right here is that, can I determine this? Yes. The reason, we have corresponding angles, congruence, converse. Because, once again, if I have two angles are congruent along, and then they're along the same line, the transversal, then angles or line M and N are parallel to each other. Take a look at number four. I'll give you a moment to take a look at that. I've got these two angles to be congruent. There's just not enough information. This is no. Because remember, yes, they might be on alternate sides, but I need to know that the angles, there's nothing that tells me that line M has any angles that are congruent to line N. Right? If I were to say alternate angles, though they better be alternate interior or alternate exterior. Right? So this angle right here, if I were to say alternate exterior converse, these two angles should be congruent. If I were to say alternate interior, then these two angles right here should be congruent to one another. And I just don't have that information. So four would be no. We go ahead and move on to number five. Let's see. They try to trick you, give you a little bit more information, a whole lot more lines here. Okay, so let's see. I'm looking at, I'll highlight this line in green and say, okay, that's our transversal. Okay, so if that's my transversal, then remember, 
line S, in order for it to be parallel to line R, I better have something along this line right here to show line M, to show that there's some sort of angle congruence. Or if I want line M and N to be parallel, I better have some angle congruence on, at the intersection of line S and line, line N. And there are none. So, once again, this is no. The only thing I have here are vertical angles that are congruent. That's all I know. That's just not enough information. Okay? And then lastly, let's take a look at number six. Now, they're saying that we want to, don't forget, the question is, is line M parallel to line N? Let's take a look at our transversal, which is line R. So then, if that right there is the case, we have to figure out what are some angle similarities or congruences with the intersection of line N and R and also with line R and M. You can see right here, I've got this angle is congruent to this one right here with on this part. So I can go ahead and say that this is yes. The reason being, we have alternate exterior angles converse. These are on the outside of the two lines, M and N, and they're on alternating sides. So alternate exterior angles converse. All right. Now, the last thing is, is line S parallel to these. There is no information. There is not enough information to help us determine that. If they gave us anything like this, if they showed that possibly this angle was congruent, then we can make that, um, we can prove that the three lines are parallel. But without that, only line M and S, M and N are parallel. And there you have it, the end of 3.3. .3.